Hello everybody and welcome to Rocking Realities. Today's guest is Eric Dover, known as a member of bands like Jellyfish and the Alice Cooper Band, and now as well the Licorice Quartet. I hope you enjoy the show and if you do, don't forget to subscribe and visit us on Facebook and let us know what you think. Now, enjoy the show. Hello? Hello, now, now I can hey. hear you. <laughs> hey. hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, uh, just working away and um, trying to get all this business sorted out. Um, <laughs> where Where are you at? Um, I, I'm at home right now. I'm in my room. Right. Uh, what? Uh, but you're in uh, Germany, is that right? Yes, I'm in Germany. Yeah. You're in LA. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So, um, you, so you have such an amazing uh, resume to like, look back on such an amazing career that um, when I prepared this interview, um, so I thought if we talk about everything, we would talk for hours. So um, <laughs> if it's fine with you, I'd like to mostly uh, focus the interview on, on the Licorice Quartet and what you're doing now and not so much on you know, what you did in your past. Sure, excellent. I'm uh, happy to answer any and all questions. <laughs> but what I would like to know about um, the past is like what what got you into music in, to, in the first place? Like uh, when did this start? When, when did you know that you wanted to do this? Well, that, uh, that was an easy question for me to answer quite early in my life. I think I knew from about the time I was eight years old that I wanted to do something with music. And that result uh, that really uh, stemmed from having a, an older sister that would bring home uh, records that wouldn't you know would inspire me, like Alice Cooper and uh, the Who. Uh, Al uh, who else? Uh, just you know all the British rock, British invasion stuff was really big in our house. Elton John, of course. Um, so. That was an easy thing for me to know at an early age, but uh, I didn't begin actually learning an instrument until I was about 10 or 11. And, and then after that, it was nonstop music, really. Yeah. And like um, this excitement that you felt back then when you started playing music as a child, is it this excitement, is it still the same feeling when you play music now? Yes, and it's even better, actually. The, the longer you go, actually, the better it gets, I think. You know, it, it just, yeah. uh, uh, you, you've had so much experience at a certain point, you know, you can, uh, you can roll with it a lot easier, and it, it just, uh, it's nice. It's nice to be able to have the, uh, the freedom of expression that way, you know. I don't, I don't think there is a better uh, feeling, you know. Yeah. Maybe. You know, your family and your pets, you know, you love them and that's a certain feeling, but music is kind of this ethereal, otherworldly experience to me, uh, especially in a, in a setting where everybody is, is kind of feeling the same energy, you know. I like asking people this question because every time I ask it, I see how this, uh, everyone's uh, face lit up and everybody's so excited to talk about it because when I talk about um, this with mus musicians like you who are really passionate about it, it's so so nice to hear you talking about, about it. I, I'm telling you, it's, uh, there's, and that's one thing that I don't like about this entire situation that we're in currently is that I, I live to play live music. I love to play in front of people. It, it's, there's no other way um, to transfer joy so instantly from one person to another. So, uh, I mean, I'm fine with being behind a camera, but boy, I sure hope that um, things can return to normal. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, so then let's go on to the Licorice Quartet. It's your new band. And uh, was it 
is it right that it was founded in 2017? Uh, yes, it was founded then. Um, how it basically started, Roger uh, began calling Tim and going, hey, what are you doing? Do you, you want to do some music of any sort? And Tim was into it. And then they called me up last and said, are you busy? And I said, no. Nope. And that kind of began the, the, uh, the process of getting together and um, writing, uh, you know, sharing songs together in a room, which we were lucky enough to do at the time. Uh, and that went on, uh, you know, off and on for a few months, we would get together and write at my studio and, uh, you know, share ideas and, and, and then we eventually chose the songs that we wanted to, to include on the record. Uh, after that, we got Jeremy Stacy uh, involved to play the drums on the record and you know, he plays with King Crimson and plays on loads of records. He's an amazing uh, drummer, so. Yeah. And um, I know that you played in, in bands together before. So was this uh, the first time you played together again since the 90s? Or did you have projects together uh, in between that time? Well, uh, well. Roger and I, the last time that we worked together was an Imperial Drag. Um, and that was in 1996. And uh, then Tim had a record, uh, the, the Uma Jets, uh, with another songwriting partner named Rob Aldridge, I believe is his name. And they had a record, and Roger and I worked on that, but that was earlier. Uh, that was like early 90s. So... Uh, this is the first time that we've been together in 20 years, uh, well, almost 20 years, something like that. I mean, it's been a long time. But, um, you know, when you are when you write songs, and all these guys are brilliant uh, songwriters and arrangers, and, you know, they think outside of the box, um, it, it was easy to pick up where we left off, uh, certainly. Yeah, that was a very nice feeling to have, actually, from from not working together for so long. So, so um, do you still like working together? Does it does it still work the same for you, like it did in the nineties, or did something uh, change in the way that you work together? Oh uh, well. If anything, it gets better. Like I said, everything kind of gets better the longer you stay with it. Uh, and in, in the case of us working together, uh, not much really changed. We, were, you know, we, we, we got back in the saddle rather quickly. Um, and the reason I say it's better though is because as you get older and more mature and having done it long enough, you just kind of learn to, uh, to communicate even better than you, than you would have when you were, say, younger, um, at least for me. Um, there, it's a wonderful process now. It's, um, I well, I say in this instance, it's, you know, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So, and um, are you writing all the songs together, like all three of you together, or is there like one main songwriter? Uh, no, no, this is a, a, a collaborative process. If you, if you ever wanted to say, hey, look up collaborative processes, this is it. Um, everyone brought different songs to the table, and uh, then we all kind of uh, dove into them and, you know, started working out uh, different uh, musical plateaus to go to or, or lyrics or, you know, music is a weird thing. It, 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 it was wonderful to get together with three minds that we were on the same page, yet we, like, we all like to think outside of each other's box as well. We have things that we hear in our head that we're trying to get together in this big, uh, this big pot of things to go through and decide how it how it's working for us, you know. Um, 
I don't know what to say otherwise. Yeah. Well, it's good that you guys are working together so so perfectly that everything is working. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's and it's not. Um, I wouldn't say it's all like uh, rainbows and sunshine. That's not how the process works. And that's something that I think needs to be understood uh, in the sense that you're working with three type A personalities that, that want to interject their musicality into something. So it's uh, how you learn to work together is a wonderful thing. And that's, that's a lesson that I think I've learned as I have uh, grown older in this process, especially when it comes to collaboration. Yeah. Well, I think it's important that everybody has their own opinion and wants, um, you know, wants to produce a song that they like, but uh, at the same time, you have to be able to work together and make compromises. And I think it sounds like you guys are able to do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're feeling it out. It's the first time that we've, you know, done this in a long time together. So we're sort of putting our you know, stepping our toes into the water, so to speak, just to see how it's, uh, how people would like it. And, and so far, we've been very, very happy with the response. You know, I, I, yeah. thank you to any, any of the fans of uh, what we're doing currently. I can't thank everyone enough, including you. Well, thank you. <laughs> It's great to be, it feels great as a fan to be appreciated to hear an artist say that. I always, it's pretty cool. Well, uh, were it not for the fans and people that like what we do, I mean, it, it wouldn't be anything. It's nice that we can have that connection through music. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I've read that, and I know that one EP is already out. But I've read that you want to release um, three EPs, and uh, so is this true? And are you already working on the next two, or, or when or will they be out? Well, good news. Uh, as you know, we released the first EP, uh, which is called Threesome Volume One, in March, and that's about the time that all of this, you know, what started. So, uh, uh, Threesome Volume 2 is the next EP, and that is going to be out, let me see, a month from now. Oh, Something that's like soon. That. It's going to be out soon, with a month, I would say two months tops. But we're uh, in the process of setting up all of the uh, necessary promotion elements for this EP, so sometimes that takes, give or take a few days, but uh, new music is coming soon. Well, that's really good news. That's great to hear. Thank um, you, yeah, we're, we're excited. This one will be uh, a bit different too, I think. For, I mean, they're all very different than the, uh, like this one will be different than the first one and the third one, which as you, said we're having three EPs to make a full-length record uh, so they're, they're all going to be a bit different in, in what the way they sound the types of songs and uh, it's going to be really cool to go through all of it eventually can you tell me a bit about what it's going to sound like the new one that's coming out hmm. Well, in relation to the first one, uh, yeah, there might be like something a bit more uh, post-punk, but not, yeah, around 1979 or 80 kind of sounds, which are cool, which we love. Uh, um, then we've got some things that are sort of maybe neo-psychedelic or a kind of like second British uh, British invasion wave, you know, some things like that. Um, well, it's 
it's going to be a pretty energetic uh, EP. Uh, we have one song I can definitely say is a rather angry, aggro sort of punk song. Um, try not to give too much away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, if the point is they're all going to be very different uh, in terms of songs and scope and, uh, you know, we, we get bored. We're just trying things, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to hear it. Can't wait. Awesome. <laughs> and um, like with the work that is that you guys still have to do for the new EP, is it possible for you guys right now to do something like to get together and work on it or, or because I'm not sure what it's like right now in LA. So is it possible for you to get stuff done right now? Uh, well, as you know, with current situation being what it is, um, we are uh, fortunate that we all have home studios and uh, we did a majority of the tracking for this record before current situation happened. Uh, so, uh, you know, we were able to sort of fill in the last bits of what we're working on to get everything prepared in our home studios, which is a wonderful thing. And uh, everyone is basically having to use file share or, or do whatever it takes to keep the music going from one end of the world to the other. So that's how we've been dealing with said situation. Yeah, well, it's, it's good we have this techno technology now to actually be able to do this, to be able to uh, share files and to record it at home and just send it over to someone else. Absolutely, I couldn't exist without it. Certainly couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, um, now when when touring is possible again, do you think that you guys um, will play some live shows? Well, we, uh, we originally got together to not even think about that, but uh, we're open. We're just going to see how things develop. And uh, as you know, Roger plays with Beck full time, so... He's uh, always very busy, and Tim has other musical endeavors happening. Um, I have Sextus, which is something I've been doing for a number of years, releasing uh, music of my own. So, and Roger has a solo record. So, we're all pretty busy, but we'll see how that pans out. I I'm not opposed to it at all, of course. Yeah. Um, so. Um, if you're playing live, do you have already an idea who you're gonna uh, hire as a drummer? Because um, I know that it's just the Licorice Contest is actually just you three guys, but um, when you're playing live, you will probably need a drummer. Uh, well, we haven't really got that far yet. Um, yeah, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, we, we just don't. Uh, there's so many unknowns at this time, and uh, so you have to just kind of think fast. And if, if uh, some shows do tend to come about, we'll, I guess we'll probably panic. But no, we won't <laughs> panic. We won't <laughs> panic. We'll be fine. Yeah, I'm sure you'll find a great solution. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Yeah. So another thing I noticed is, uh, the store that you have on your web page because you offer, offer so many different services and it's so cool because I've never seen this before. So whose idea was that? Uh, well, we just sort of, you know, being as how we really didn't want to tour to begin with, uh, we still wanted to have a way to offer something of, of use to any of our fans or listeners. So, uh, we set up these uh, different experiences that you can go and check out and see if there's, there's something you like, um, you know, just to, to be able to interact with fans and people that are, that are um, responding to our music so positively. And, uh, and, it, and it's 
come about at a great time too with current situation. So uh, we're very happy to to do that on uh, you know on the in these virtual terms, I guess. Yeah. So you probably can't go shopping with your fans right now. <laughs> Not yet. I, I I hope to at some point hit some record stores and yeah. Um, I mean, I miss that so badly. It's crazy. Do you, do you like to record shop? Yes, I love record shopping, especially with my dad when my dad is with me because he knows the good ones. <laughs> he tells me like, you buy this one, this one's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, uh, and I have loads and loads of records. I, have a, I mean, I wouldn't say I have like the most rec impressive record collection, but I have a pretty cool record collection. But I... Uh, it's a bit in in a disarray right now because I just moved, so I have to uh, work on uh, restoring some things. Do you have a favorite record that you own? No, but I have some special records that that mean something to me, but they're kind of ridiculous. Like nobody would. If I played it for you, you'd go, what? Why does this record have any special significance? You know, um, and I've, I have records like that. Um, I have some very good soundtrack stuff. Um, you know, it, it goes across all genres. It's not just, it's not just one genre. It's like huge variety of, of things. But I wouldn't say I have a favorite vinyl record per se. Not yet. Yeah. Well, records, what I really like about records is that you actually have something in your hands that you can look at while, while you're for listening to it. And some of the, the old records have really cool packaging. Like uh, the artist actually really thought of something and like it's not just a picture. Like, um, like schools out by Alice Cooper, for example, they, they really thought, thought of something when and they designed the cover, and that's what I really like about it. Yeah, the uh, the internet age has made the art small. You know, everything has to fit on a phone screen now, and uh, that format of records was pretty nice. You know, that size, twelve inch or whatever. Uh, you could get a lot of of really nice detail that you could take home and open it up and look at it. Like I remember, uh, well, for me growing up, it was the Elton John Captain Fantastic record. Yeah. It was a triple fold out sleeve and it had just like everything was art and there were like two booklets in it and it had the lyrics in one and it had a, like a scrapbook of uh, memoirs and other things. I mean, wow. And that yeah. you get that for, it was what, I don't know how much it was back in the day. It wasn't that much. Eight, nine bucks or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I remember as a child going through my dad's record collection and just looking at all of them. And then when, when I liked one going, Dad, I want to listen to this one. <laughs> Can you play this one? And that's how I, also a reason why I really got into this music, just my dad's record collection, him playing those records every day. And that's, I think that's one of the reasons why I, got into music at an early age and why I'm now so passionate about it. That's wonderful. Well, I mean, good on your dad for exposing you to all the cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get back to you. We <laughs> to totally got off topic now. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so, um, I saw a video of you um, explaining how to play one of the songs on guitar and uh, that made me think if you ever thought about teaching guitar? Uh, not as of yet, but you know, I may do something like that in the future, who knows. Um, the thing I've always done was uh, if people were in my periphery that I kind of hang out with occasionally and they want to know something or 
you know, if somebody showed up and said, hey, can you teach me something? Literally, if I were on tour and said, hey, man, I want to learn a song. Maybe I could teach them, but um, I don't consider myself really a good teacher. I think you, you know? could do it. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I, I did teach when I was in college uh, years ago. And uh, it was quite funny to earn extra money, of course. And, uh, well, I liked it with the kids that were serious. And the, but, you know, some mom would drop her seven-year-old off and he didn't give a shit, you know. He didn't want to learn. You're like, you know. that was frustrating. But I don't mind teaching anything I know. I could, I could teach you anything. Of course, um, I guess it just depends on how you ask. Yeah, but um, when you started playing guitar, did you have guitar lessons or did you teach it yourself? No, I, well, I started out self-taught and then, uh, well, I learned from older people always first by looking and watching them. And then I went to uh, take guitar lessons at about 11 uh, from a really old lady. And she played about 30 different instruments. And she uh, taught me to read music and play hymns and show tunes and uh, no rock at all, of course. And then I took lessons in uh, high school from like a very accomplished classical uh, guitarist named Marvin McCombs. Uh, and he studied with Segovia actually. Um, Segovia's last master class, Marvin was at that class. And that guy, you know, probably my favorite or the best teacher that I ever had really. And uh, yeah, after that, it was music. Uh, I studied music in college. Uh, and after that, I, around 18 or 19, uh, began to just go play. So no more, no more school really like that yeah. for me. Well, that's cool. So, um... If people want to stay up to date with what you're up to and when the new uh, Licorice Quartet EP is coming out, um, what's the best way for them um, to, uh, to know, you know, to, uh, yeah, well, to stay up to date and to know what's going on? Uh, that would be at thelicoricequartet.com and there you can find out, uh, you know, releases, uh, things that we're releasing, videos, uh, you know, uh, anything about the, the EPs and the music, where to buy the uh, different experiences that we're offering. Um, you know, just ways to get in touch with us, too. You can always send us a message there. And uh, we look forward to hearing from everyone. I hope. <laughs> That's great. So, thank you so much for taking the time. And I'd love to do a part two at some point if you're up for it. A, a what now? A, a part two, like uh, doing this again at some point. If you're oh, yes, it. sure, part two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, wonderful, Lily. I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you for... Thank you. This for, was so uh, much you. fun. Thank you. Thank you again. And have, have a great a, uh, evening. And you have a great day. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs>